Coming to you live from the Interaction Media Studio in Morgantown. Welcome to Positively West Virginia. I'm your host, Jim Matuga. Today, we're going to visit with Stephen Mann. He's the owner of Man Cave Distillery in Weston, West Virginia. Of course, that's in Lewis County. But before we get into that conversation, a little bit about our mission here at Positively West Virginia. Every week, we talk with West Virginia business leaders and share their success stories with people just like you in West Virginia and across the country. When we first started this podcast project back in 2017, one of the things we set out to do was to encourage and inspire our listeners with positive business stories from right here in the Mountain State. And to date, we've produced more than 200 episodes and Positively West Virginia is now a 501c3 nonprofit organization. You can learn more about our mission of promoting small business and entrepreneurship in West Virginia at PositivelyWV.com. You know, I get to see so many positive things happening in West Virginia business every day that quite frankly, quite uh, not, not a lot of people ever get to hear about. So my team at Interaction Media and now Positively West Virginia, we're working to change that with this show so that people realize you don't have to leave West Virginia to find great business opportunities. They're right here in our state. We want to encourage people to stay here, build great companies here, move here. Heck, build great companies and organizations right here in West Virginia. All of our guests are people who are actually getting that done too, day in and day out. And I'm convinced we can all learn from their experiences and most importantly, their stories. Our guest once, a day, once again today is Stephen Mann. Stephen is the owner of Man Cave Distillery in Weston, West Virginia. Of course, they're in Lewis County. Stephen, thanks for being on the show today, man. Well, thanks for having me, Jim. Absolutely. I'm excited to have you on the podcast to share your story this week. As I mentioned, Stephen Mann owns, he's the founder of Man Cave Distillery, and that's M-A-N-N-C-A-V-E, Man Cave Distillery. And if you haven't heard of these guys, you're, you're sleeping because they're everywhere. You're, you're hearing their brand. You're seeing them on store shelves across the state of West Virginia and other places. We're going to learn about that. But Man Cave Distillery opened their doors in December of 2018, and now they're an international award-winning distillery distillery based right here in West Virginia. We invited Stephen on the show today to talk about Man Cave Distillery, to share their story and to give our audience some valuable insight into the company that he leads right here in West Virginia. Stephen, take a minute, fill in some gaps from that very brief intro that I gave and give us a little behind the curtain look into your company. Well, uh, we started out uh, early on. It was actually an idea uh, that I that I was presented with my from my boss and uh, after I'd let him try some of my homemade whiskey and uh, he basically told me in a nutshell to quit my job and go make whiskey for a living so he could buy it from me. Um, That's cool. So that that was the beginning of it and that was back in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, it took us a couple of years to build the place and from there you know we've made a few awards. Well, Stephen, take us back to that that time in, in 2016. You were making spirits uh, on, like as a hobby. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I was, yeah, it was a hobby. Uh, I had started to, I, I liked a Macallan Eleganza scotch and I could not find it anywhere because it would basically was being um, discontinued. Um, they made it in 1991. Uh, it was duty free only. Um, and I just couldn't get it anymore. So I figured, well, how hard could this be? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I went and started playing around with some barrels and some, with some uh, alcohol. And about the 15th iteration, I made something better than the Macallan Eleganza, which is, I say, about $800 a bottle right now. Mm. So, you know, it kind of went from there. <laughs> Well, what's your background? Where, what were you doing prior to this? What, like when you're, you said your, your boss told you to quit your job and start making whiskey so that he could buy it. Where, what were you doing? At that? I'm, a, I'm a network architect. I, I do IT for a living. Uh, I still do, actually. Uh, during the mornings, I work for Homeland Security. and the afternoons, I work for Man Cave. So, you're a busy guy. Yeah, it makes for long days. That's, that's awesome. Well, so, so fast forward, then you, you guys, you start talking about this, you, 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 uh, you, you have this vision, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to start a distillery. Take us to that point. Bring us up to speed. Well, um, we ran the numbers, uh, figured out we might make it as, as a distillery. Um, we built the location, we built the water system, we built 
the water storage system. We built the building. Everything was built from scratch. There was literally nothing here. Um, it was built on family owned property. Um, once we got up and running, we got our permits all straightened out, uh, federal permit and our state permit. And then we um, started making uh, whiskey. I guess we started out with uh, vodka and moonshine. Uh, our vodka at the time was admittedly probably terrible. <laughs> but uh, we fixed that. Um, once we had those two going, we started into whiskey, which it took us a while to get the mature whiskey. Uh, and then we added vodka, or sorry, added gin to our, to our mix. So we have whiskey, moonshine, vodka, and gin. And we actually have two other flavors, which is the cinnamon moonshine and the black raspberry vodka. You know, we're going to talk more in depth about the products here in a minute, but I'm just fascinated by how you got started with this. Now, did you have to have a lot of capital investment to get started? How did that, how did that play out? Yeah, well, we, we probably borrowed upwards of uh, 2 million and then our, in our, our life savings, pretty much uh, another million and a half, roughly. So we got about three and a half million in this right now. Wow. So that's an incredible thing right there, that risk that you're taking. The payoff is, you know, obviously you want to build a business around this, 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 this distillery and you've got all sorts of different products you're making. I'm, I'm curious where, you know, we, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, the, the entrepreneurial journey. Did you ever have this in your mind that you were going to be a, you know, a, 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 uh, whiskey or a distillery entrepreneur? <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> it's not exactly one of those things. You, it's, it's one of those things where you just kind of one day it hit me and that's, that's where we ended up. But I, I never intended to go down this road. Honestly, mm -hmm. it was not something I, as a kid, I thought I was going to do or anything like that, mm -hmm. even though, yes, I was distilling in high school, but that's beside the point. <laughs> very interesting but yeah yeah we, we don't have to go down that down that path but i do want to talk Stephen, a little bit about because you mentioned water and getting the water system right you, you also mentioned the fact that you're on this uh family property talk about the history of this of this farm that you guys are on. how many acres is it uh the entire farm is 450 acres it's uh was it's uh family owned out of that i own 13 acres uh, and that's what the distillery is sitting on that's awesome. And, and so are you, you're a transplant. You weren't, in other words, you weren't born in West Virginia, but, you, you, but you, you're here now. Is that correct? Correct. I was born in Tacoma Park, Maryland. Well, how I did, moved to yeah. West Virginia when I was in sixth grade. Sixth grade. Okay, cool. So how, how did you come upon this family land? In other words, is, is this place you used to come when you were a, a young man? Now you're, now you're living here. Well, my parents bought the place in the sixties. Uh, I don't know how they became upon it, but, uh, We've had roots here. I've been, I've been to West Virginia from the time I could walk, I guess, or before that, because they came back and forth all the time. Yeah, that's awesome. So talk a little bit about uh, this water, uh, because I, I, I saw a video where you guys, you know, you kind of hand dug this trench and you found this source of this fantabulous spring that's in the property. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm imagining that a distillery it, much like a brewery, uh, really depends a lot on the quality of water. Talk a little bit about your water system here. Okay, well, the water comes out of the, out of, well, at the time it came out of a, a hole in the ground. It was about uh, four inches in diameter. Mm -hmm. um, it fed into a, the biggest mud hole you've ever seen. Um, <laughs> it was about nine feet deep of mud that I know of because uh, I stepped into it and went all the way to my neck. Oh my lands. Uh, you couldn't get anywhere within 30 feet of this water. So you couldn't walk to it. You couldn't crawl to it. It didn't matter. You sunk. So I and my kids uh, basically started digging a trench through a basically a rim of clay that was holding all this water in until we got down far enough to where we could actually drain out the water and, and drain it enough to solidify the ground to where we could actually walk on it. Mm. Uh, that took us about a year. Um, it was about a six, six foot trench dug by hand through the nastiest muck you've ever seen. Wow. I can only imagine. So 
did you I, I, kind of placing the timeline here? Did you know that this source of water was going to be the uh, the backbone of Man Cave Distillery at the time, or were you just? Trying- yes, I did. At that at that time, I did. Uh, before that, you know, I did not. It was I knew the water was there. I always wanted to do something with it. But um, once we started developing it, uh, once we had equipment in there and we dug it out, we found the caves the, or the coal mines. There's two coal mines. The first one, when we cracked it open, it flooded the valley. Um, like seriously? Flooded <laughs> yeah, up. you're talking about 300 foot long, I guess you'd say a, essentially a five foot diameter pipe letting loose of all of its water all at once. Um, so we found that one and we got it cleaned out. And then I was digging a trench down the side of the mountain to kind of, kind of dry out the area a little bit more. And I hit a second. one. Mm. And the second one is about five foot in diameter, but it branches off from like 10 or 15 locations and it go, goes into the mountain about 500 feet. Mm-hmm. And I have been to the back of both of them. I found an, ex, an old pickaxe in the back of the second mine. The other one was quite empty. And they have had uh, timber rails where they had donkeys pulling carts. And there was also old cam- canvas covered airlines up through the mine. Wow. It was pretty That's- interesting. Oh my gosh. You, you had no idea what that, that was there, but it was, it was a, uh, it wasn't a gold mine, but it was a veritable coal mine, but it was a gold mine in a sense. Yeah, it was. The water is awesome. Yeah, water like- comes out of the mine at about 6.8 pH. Um, it's got a little bit of iron in it, but other than that, the water is perfect. I couldn't ask for a better, better water. Wow. That's incredible. And, and what, in terms of distilling spirits, is that, I mean, how, how much water is involved with that? Well, uh, our typical run takes about 300 gallons of water and uh, 600, 600 pounds of ground corn. So, and we do almost a run a day. So you, it's not a terrible amount of water for that. But when we, when we look at, we use our water for also for cooling the still. And that's where we really run into water usage. We, we use upwards of 5,000 to 6,000 gallons a day. Oh my goodness. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Thank you for that backstory. I think that's awesome. Well, I want to ask you a question that I ask every guest on the show. And I always say, tell us your 30 second pitch for man cave distillery. In other words, what is it you tell people that you do? Uh, we try to make the best whiskey, the best spirits that you can buy. Um, my goal is to change the way people think about alcohol. Most people think about alcohol as you get, get a good you get drink at night, you pay for it in the morning. Uh, with our stuff, you don't pay for it in the morning. You wake up in the morning like feeling like you haven't been drinking. Unless you go oh, way overboard, then you're still drunk. But that's beside the point. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, everything we make has to be made, has to be uh, enjoyable out of the bottle and without ha- having to mix it with something. Otherwise, we failed in our goal. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. Pretty cool goal, I think. What would you say is the thing you're most excited about for Man Cave Distillery right now, Stephen? Um, I'm, I'm hoping to uh, expand into other states. Um, I'm hoping to actually change some of the laws in West Virginia to be a little more friendly to distilleries so that uh, some of them more can survive. Mm-hmm. Um, there's quite a few things I want to do. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's cool. What's the geographic uh, area that you serve now? You mentioned expand your market. Where where do you serve currently? Where are your customers? Right now, it's all of West Virginia. Um, we have to apply and do the legal uh, applications for to become a vendor in every state. So each state requires its own license for us to sell in that state, and we have to go through all of those. You, they really don't talk to people until. Uh, distillery reaches two years because you want to make sure you're going to be there next year before they even go through all that paperwork. Wow. Okay. That, that, that makes a lot of sense in terms of like the, how the process works. You, um, how many employees do you have there at man cave? I have one person that, uh, helps me out and the rest is family. Oh, that's great. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the accolades you're, spirits have been receiving recently you got double gold from the san francisco world spirits competition for your product called man cave cinnamon moonshine that's a double gold award 
talk a little bit about that process, what that award means to you, and tell us then about this cinnamon moonshine. Okay, well, the award was, we were com completely blown away. Uh, <laughs> that is the highest medal that you can get, mm -hmm. other than a platinum, which is just three double golds three years in a row. Um, a double gold in that competition means that 38 judges out of 38 judges rank that product a gold medal. So every single judge ranked that as a gold medal. Um, that is the largest competition in the world. It's uh, often re referred to as the Oscars of the spirits competitions. Uh, it's probably the most respected. And winning that award means that they send our information out to 90,000 distributors worldwide. So in, in addition to that, we added an, an ad in that tasting panel magazine for man cave distilling so that they see our products, our pictures of our products and everything and, and all our information into all the distributors worldwide. We're hoping that that kind of catapults us a little bit forward um, in the future. Yeah, no doubt. So talk a little bit about the product, Cinnamon Moonshine. What is Cinnamon it? Moonshine is um, moonshine that is infused with cinnamon real cinnamon. We don't use artificial anything. Uh, everything we make is um, natural product. Uh, we infuse instead of flavor, you know what I mean? Uh, the cinnamon sits in the moonshine for about two months until it, the taste and color profile are exactly what we're looking for. Hmm. And if we don't like it, it gets tossed. Wow, that's incredible. So, now, is that product available in West Virginia currently, that cinnamon moonshine? It is. It is available in any liquor store. Um, if your liquor store in the area does not have it, go in and ask them about it because all the liquor stores are customer driven. They won't, we, we can drop samples off all day long, but, but if people aren't asking for it, they're not going to stock it. Really? Is that how it works? That's that is how it works in reality. Pretty... And we've been trying to do marketing and all this other stuff, but the liquor store is really it's all customer driven. Yeah. So, and, and I like the fact that you kind of talked about, you know, your, your spirits don't need mixers. So you can just drink this right out of the bottle. You can. Uh, a lot of times it's a little bit strong for people. Um, for instance, our uh, black raspberry vodka. Um, if you add that to something like a sweet tea, you get a black raspberry sweet tea or, you know, a lemonade, you get a black raspberry lemonade and you can, the vodka kind of disappears and you just left with the black raspberry and the tea. <laughs> so it's really good that way. Uh, the cinnamon, it's very strong cinnamon flavor. Uh, we use that. We primarily made that for our apple pie recipe where we um, take our, our moonshine and we mix in the apple juice and the, and the uh, cinnamon moonshine and a little bit of sugar. And it tastes just like apple pie. And it doesn't leave you any nasty aftertaste like the pre-mixed ones you get because they're all artificial flavored so really interesting Stephen. you know you've been in business since 2018 what would you say has been your best business moments since you've been in business oh wow um god winning a double gold at the largest competition in the world kind of is in the top there yeah. uh, we also won you know, we've won, won a, uh, awards every year we've been in business so far uh we started out with uh, the San Diego Spirits Festival. We got two awards on our two products. And then last year, uh, we won John Barleycorn Awards with all four of our products again. At the time, we have four products. And then uh, this year, we won with six products. So we have 12 medals now. Uh, it's, it's been a roller coaster because, you know, I think my product is good, but then getting confirmation in, from a large competition like that like the first third and fourth largest in the world um it it means a lot to us yeah that, i can only imagine it's got to be affirming and saying hey we're on to something here right yep and my goal is to uh get it, uh, all the medals I, I have a i have a gold i want <laughs> from that competition <laughs> so hopefully next year we'll get a gold in one of those That's well what on the flip side of that, what's been your worst business moment? Take us to that place of your worst experience and tell us that story. Oh, my worst business moment. Have me think. 
Oh God, finding out about the laws in West Virginia. Um, well, you mentioned that a minute ago. Talk talk a little bit about that. Oh, there's a there's a lot of things in West Virginia that really hurt. Um, one of the one of them, I guess, is the 32 percent tax on stuff that we have to give away for free for tastings. <laughs> um, you know, hmm. we pay. Uh, liquor stores in our area, 2% of our gross income even in, in it. And in some areas, that's actually Walmart. So for-profit business giving a for-profit business part of their, their gross, gross income. Um, let's see. Not being able to, to, be, to do tastings off-site. I mean, I can't go to a, a festival like a winery or a brewery and do tastings to uh, allow people to try my product you know, outside of my building, you know, things like that really hurt us a lot. You know, or, or is West Virginia the only state that has those kinds of restrictions or is that kind of a... I'm going to say no, but um, a lot of states are changing them and states like Tennessee and um, Kentucky are basically way ahead of West Virginia on some of the changes they've made. But you know, there's, there's a list of stuff that I would love to get changed. And I think it w would catapult businesses in West Virginia into the, you know, limelight and bring business to West Virginia or grow business, small businesses into large businesses in West Virginia, which is a, a better goal. Yeah, absolutely. As we, as we continue to talk about diversifying our economy, it's local producers of, of food and beverages. And in, in that beverages, I consider, you know, spirits to be a part of that. But you know, local breweries are, are they're dealing with this, you know, very similar kinds of restrictions and stuff like that. And uh, even uh, from from an agricultural standpoint, point, there's a lot of things that still need to be, you know, improved upon and changed. And obviously, uh, telling that story is is part of getting the word out there for sure. Stephen, I want to take a second and just mention our sponsors for Positively West Virginia, and they include the State Journal, WVNews.com, and Interaction Media. The support we receive from these West Virginia companies allow us to highlight the incredible things happening in business throughout the great state of West Virginia. Our guest today, once again, is Stephen Mann. He's the owner of Man Cave Distillery in Weston, West Virginia, right there in the heart of Lewis County. Stephen, I want to get right back into it. What's the vision that you have for Man Cave Distillery? Long term, long term. Um, you know what Tito's is, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I I would like to get the company uh, national on the near in the relatively long term and international eventually. Um, I'd like to see our product outside worldwide. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, it bring in a lot of. Uh, a lot of income to the state, uh, a lot of visitation to, and you, you, you look at the bourbon trail. I mean, you've got thousands and thousands of people that every year that come out to the distillery to see how it's made and, 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 and share in the experience. Um, and we want to be part of that. And eventually we'd like to have here on site, we'd like to have a great big greenhouse, you know, to actually grow some of the things like lemons and oranges and things we use in our gin. Um, we'd like to have big, huge uh, like pavilions so you can, we can host events and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, also, we'd uh, potentially uh, looking at uh, manufacturing stills at some point so that we can help other distilleries in their uh, goal of becoming a distillery. Um, I know we got really hurt early on because the, the the still producer that we purchased from um was tried to sell our still to three different customers and they defrauded a lot of people out of money and we were very lucky to get our still uh at the last minute we finally sued them and got our still but we almost didn't make it because of that that's that sounds like a, you've you've gone through a lot of trials and tribulations over a short period of time, and are seem like you're really doing a great job with uh, you know persevering through that. Stephen, I, I want to ask you, how do you attract new customers? In other words, you talked about sampling and 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 those kinds of things, and you've, we've talked about these awards that you've gotten international acclaim from. But how when it you know when it comes down to it, how do you get new customers? 
Well, that has been a challenge we've had for a while. Um, since our budget for uh, marketing is not very big, to, to say it's very small, <laughs> so, um, we are kind of relying on word of mouth. Um, we do do some advertising. We put some billboards up. But when it comes down to marketing, it, it gets so expensive to try to market that it's out of our reach. Um, so this kind of thing right here helps us a lot to get people to know that we exist. And I'm figuring that eventually word of mouth and people talking to each other and liking the product is going to go exponentially, you know, in the wild. So that a lot of people are talking about it more, but it's working up to that and surviving until we get to that point. That's the big thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's inter interesting. Now, uh, a question uh, as I'm listening to that, it, it uh, are you, how, I don't even know how to answer, ask this question, but like if you're out for dinner and you go to a, a nice restaurant with your spouse and you, they have these like beautiful handcrafted cocktails, are you guys on the, are you in available in bars and restaurants and stuff like that too? We're working on that. We, okay. again, it's, it, it's one of those things that customer driven If the customers are not asking for it. The bars are not picking it up. Yep. So we have gone to bars, we've let them sample our products, but that does, does not make them pick it up. You know, they have to have people ask for it before they're going to go to the liquor store and it physically grab a bottle and, you know, put it on their menu. Yeah, it's so, very so, inter all interconnected, but it's all driven by the customer. It is. And getting it to the customer. And like I said, our best avenue is to be able to do tastings. And because you're not going to go out and buy a bottle of liquor that you're not sure of, or you don't think will be there next month, or you're not even sure of the company, yeah. you know, it, it's just reality. So if you can try the product and you're happy with it, and we have a lot, almost all of our customers are repeat customers. So we are retaining our customers that we are, you know, bringing in. That's a good and thing. We're, you know, <laughs> it's a good thing. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Well, let me ask you this, you know, um, how, how do you, you know, I, and I don't know this, this business like you do it. I mean, it sounds like you're very knowledgeable. You're an expert in, in distilled spirits. What sets man cave apart from the others? I mean, I, I know you talked about ingredients. We talked about the water is the water, the thing, or what is it that sets separates? Well, our, it was actually an honest mistake early on that turned out not to be a mistake. Uh, it was part of our distilling process. Uh, we completely screwed something up and it turned out to be the best thing we ever did. Uh, it made our liquor very smooth and it gave it a very sweet taste and there's no sugar in it. So uh, that mistake is our signature. No one else, I, to my knowledge, knows how to do what we do and create as smooth a liquor as we produce. And it was all a dumb mistake in the first several months of trying to figure this stuff out. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, I think that, uh, I think you're onto something here and I feel like you've got, you know, these great flavor profiles that aren't just, you know, your opinion, but you're getting va validation and, and real, um, consideration from some of the top award company or award organizations out there. Like you said, the Oscars of, uh, spirit world, if you will, good stuff. You talked a little bit about some challenges that you face. What's the biggest challenge you're facing right now, Stephen? Uh, marketing. <laughs> By far marketing. Um, and just and just trying trying to um, keep up with everything with the amount of money that's left over after all the taxes. <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean to laugh, but it's just the way you said that it was, uh, it was, it was pretty good. It's, it's a reality that we are considered a, well, we've traditionally been considered a sin product. So we're hammered with all the sin taxes. And, you know, when you're left with a couple dollars, a bottle of, you know, our, our profit from a bottle is, is a couple of dollars. 
yeah. because the state takes a whole bunch, the federal takes a whole bunch, the liquor store takes a whole bunch. Um, it's one of those things where if you make in a million bottles, you, you can make three, four dollars a bottle and you're, for, you're fine. But and when you're selling in the thousands, three to four to bottles does not get you very far. Are you allowed so, to disclose what, what your pricing is? I don't know if that's a, against the law or not. But uh, No, I don't think it's against the law. It's all published, what, but it's hidden. Um, yeah. We pay 32% tax. Uh, well, let's say I'm sending it to the state. They take 32% uh, as a bailment, and that's their processing and tax and all that stuff. And then they do, I think, 80 cents a case. And then the liquor store, when they ship it to the liquor store, they take another 30 to 32 percent. Yes. So uh, then you add the federal, which is um, right now it's two dollars and eighty cents a proof gallon, which is a hundred proof gallon. Um, but it's probably going to go back up to thirteen twenty a proof gallon. So all in all, when you have a twenty five dollar bottle of liquor. The distillery gets between three and five dollars out of the bottle wow. after manufacturing. Well, thank you for that insight. And, you know, so you're saying like a and a, a bottle like a, typically it's like a 750 milliliter bottle. Yes. Okay. And the cinnamon moonshine we were talking about that's roughly a twenty five dollar price point. It's roughly it's thirty seven fifty. Thirty seven fifty. Okay, cool. So that's why we got to go out and, and and support Man Cave Distillery right there <laughs> else we got to buy local right yeah it would be good yeah, awesome man steven what's one piece of advice you would give to uh young entrepreneurs maybe somebody who's thinking about an idea maybe they had no dreams about being a, a, an entrepreneur like you like yourself uh, but but all of a sudden they get this idea this spark to start a business which what's one piece of advice wow uh i think the biggest thing that bit me was the tax structure. Um, a lot of that stuff, unless you're actually in the business, you don't find out about them. I mean, you can look through the online paperwork, you can look through the laws, but you're never going to find them. A lot of these taxes are just buried so deep that, you know, you don't know what they are. I mean, unless you're doing something, I mean, again, this is a liquor business and granted that it has a lot more taxes than anybody else. Um, but make sure you understand the laws and make sure you understand the tax structure of what you're, you're on the hook to pay because, um, that's the thing that's going to either make or break you. Uh, also realize that, um, media and, uh, advertising marketing is probably going to be 60% of your budget. Mm. I mean, unless you're doing something like a, like a 7-Eleven, you know, it's a franchise. People see 7-Eleven. They know what it is because it's already been marketed. Mm -hmm. But if you're starting something new that has not been marketed and people don't know you, it's really hard. I've got people in Weston that do not know we exist. And we've been here two and a half years. That's got to be frustrating. You, you know, I always say in business, everything costs twice as much as you think, and it takes twice as long as you think. Twice would be easy. <laughs> uh, Steven, yeah, I tell you, man, I, I, I admire what you're doing. And, and I think it's, I think it's super cool. You know, your, your story and your journey. Um, you know, one of the things that, um, that I always like to talk about is like, you know, you mentioned these tastings, you know, and having people come, how do, how do people, how do they get exposed to you? In other words, do you have a, a place there where they can come and do these tastings? Talk a little bit about that. We have a tasting room. Um, it's out here at the distillery. Our primary uh, advertising, I think right now, our best advertising has been the billboard. And also the Western Democrat has been, been helpful. And WVNet, WV News, uh, they've helped us out a lot. Um, uh, I guess uh, podcasts, I've done yours and I've done uh, Hoppy. Awesome. Um, people come in and said, I heard you on Hoppy. So... I do, I do get people that actually, uh, you know, come in from those, uh, people come in just because they saw the awards, uh, on 
actually a San Francisco World Spirits competition. I've had people who actually track are watching that and saying, hey, I saw this up on, on, a, on their site. I wanted to try this bottle. So That's cool. So I want to get back to the tasting room. Now, do you have tours as well tied with Yes, that? we have free tours and free tastings. Okay, what's the best way? Well, I, I imagine people can just go to your website. What's your, what is your website? www.mancave.com. Two N's because it has nothing to do with gender. It's my last name. <laughs> man uh with man cave distillery we're, we're putting links up on the on the facebook live right now and we'll make sure we have links to your website uh is that a great way for people to get in touch with you as well yes uh website or facebook or and uh also instagram all right so you mentioned facebook and i was curious about that because i, I want i did want to ask you about it. Uh, it now you know facebook is notorious for all these different uh criteria and you know really putting a kind of a stranglehold on, on business these days. Is, is that, is that a marketing platform for you? Social media? It was for a while, uh, recently, um, in, unless people are actually looking for you, uh, trying to put out an ad on Facebook. I don't, I don't see much of a return on that. So they haven't been real helpful. Um, we also run into issues with, uh, let, like places like Waze, they don't allow alcohol advertising. Um, so we have to figure out number one, are we allowed to do it? And because of our industry, and number two, is 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 it going to be effective with the cost? Yep, yep. I, I mean, I get that totally. And uh, you know, just like you said, there's it seems like you're hamstrung every time you turn around. There's something a regulation or a tax you got to deal with. Yes, there's a lot of that. But hopefully we get some of these changed. Uh, I've actually taken a taken my list here and sent it out to uh, a couple of representatives and see if we can get some of these laws changed. I know if a lot of these uh, things that I'd like to get changed in the law, if they, they were changed, it would make a difference for not only the beer and wine or, and alcohol industry, it would make a big, big difference for starting out uh, small business, because one of the things I'm advocating for is a tiered tax system. So if you're making up to $100,000 a year, you pay, say, 10% tax. And then 100000 to 200000 you pay, you know, 15% tax on the 100 to 120, you know, 150000 you know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. So well. that way it would give the small business a way to compete with the larger businesses that or have the quantity, they've worked out all their problems already. They've already got mass production, which means they only need to make $2 on their product and still make millions versus, yep. you know, I'm selling a thousand versus they're selling a million. Yep. It's a big difference. Huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. What's one book or podcast you'd recommend for aspiring entrepreneurs, Stephen? Oh my, I don't know that I've really read many books outside of my business school uh <laughs> wvu <laughs> <laughs> is that where you went to school Did yes you... it is i went to wvu <laughs> What's your degree in, by chance business information systems all right cool well you're using that for sure right oh i am uh i used if if there was a couple of things you need to learn as an entrepreneur one of them is pick up an accounting book um yeah. because you're going to need it uh, and a lot of hours reading law to figure out what you're supposed to pay and where. That's um, as far as another book that that helped me a lot, it's weirdest thing to say, but I read Battlefield Earth by L. Ron Hubbard, and it was more of a, a, a thought process in that book. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I, I don't think that's been recommended. <laughs> We have a we have a running list of all. The books. <laughs> it's all it's all about leverage in that in that book, and it's like it's very useful, honestly. Absolutely. Well, we'll make sure we put it in. But our... not the movie. The movie is completely worthless. <laughs> They're talking the book. All right, good. Well, we have a a resource section where every book that's ever been recommended by more than two hundred and fifty. Uh, entrepreneurs just like yourself uh, are, are on there. Some of them have been repeated, so there's not 200, 200 plus books on there, but uh, folks can go there and check it out. And uh, we'll have a link up there that they can actually buy the book just from Amazon. <laughs> so, Stephen, you know, um, obviously we've covered a lot in this uh, 
in this interview. And I'm just curious, is there anything else you think our listeners should know about your story or man cave distilleries or your products? Um, things we should know. Well, other than the, the we're all natural ingredients, uh, we don't add any artificial colorings, no artificial flavorings. Um, we're very um, adamant on uh, producing a quality product. Um, as far as coming out and checking it out, you come out to the distillery anytime. We're open seven days a week, uh, 10 to six on weekdays and Saturday and one to five on Sunday. You can do free tours and tastings. Love it. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of cool out here. We have a wishing well that we just built on the property from an old well that was dug. Um, that's awesome. I love your, that you're tying the tourism aspect in too, because that's one of West Virginia's largest industries. And of course, Lewis County uh, is a great place. If you're, if you're looking for things to do, definitely check out Man Cave. Stephen, one final plug for some of the products. We talked quite a bit about the cinnamon. Uh, we talked about the whiskey. What, what are some of the other products that you carry? Uh, the black raspberry, vodka. Okay, so our product rundown is the cinnamon moonshine, the moonshine, which is 129 proof for both of the moonshines. Um, the moonshine is very smooth. It's not 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 your uh, off the shelf moonshine that you pick up from your liquor store. Uh, it's much smoother than most of them. Uh, as far as the whiskey, we have a honey vanilla whiskey. Uh, it's basically a bourbon. We don't call it a bourbon because of the red tape to get through through to call it a bourbon, and we distill it a little further than we're allowed to for a bourbon. So uh, bourbon is required to be distilled at 160 or below proof. We do 180. It makes a better product. Wow. Uh, our gin is a black raspberry gin. It's got uh, six botanicals in it. It's got juniper, lemon, uh, orange, coriander, lemongrass, and black raspberry. Wow. Uh, it's not your typical gin and it doesn't taste like a pine tree uh, a lot of gins that's all you taste is pine and that turns a lot of people off ours has balanced it with the other botanicals so you can actually taste the, all the botanicals and then we have our vodka which is uh, a very smooth vodka it doesn't have the bite that you would typically get it is not filtered through charcoal so it does not have the charcoal deadness um, we don't even have a charcoal filter like, you know, you'd get in Tito's and all the other ones because that's vodka is you either distill it a lot of times, which is distilled 37 times, mm. um, or you distill it a couple of times and you run it through a charcoal filter to kill the flavor and the smell. So we elected to do the distillation method. Mm. Uh, our whiskey and the moonshine are distilled 16 times, the vodka and the gin 37. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. The, uh, I'm learning a lot here. I don't know all the stuff about spirits. you like I said, you definitely are the expert here and man, I tell you, there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, who comes up with the, the, the flavor profiles? Is that something that you're, you're, you know, involved with? That's kind of a, um, family thing. Um, family and friends, uh, we have, a couple of things we're playing around with. We haven't come up with anything that, that meets the requirements we have for our, our products. Uh, we played with peach uh, vodka and we've played with apple vodka. But when you're using natural ingredients, the flavor is very um, subdued and it's not really what we're looking for. And we don't wanna go with artificial stuff. So we're yeah. trying to find something that is really good out of the bottle and has that, you know, draw for people um, instead of just kind of throwing stuff together or using commercial flavorings and, and whatnot that everybody else does. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I, I think that's really, uh, really interesting. Uh, I, Stephen, it's been a real honor to have you on the show today. I think what you're doing is really fantastic, especially, um, you know, going through the and persevering all the trials and tribulations of some of the legalities and taxes and everything like that. It's been, uh, it's been inspiring just to listen to your story. I just want to keep, you know, encourage you to keep up the great work. 
thanks. It's it's uh, helpful for for you guys to come out and approach us. Yeah. Um, this kind of stuff really is uh, something I'm kind of new to. Yeah, <laughs> so. you did a great job, and I really appreciate you being on the show today. All right, thank you. Absolutely, folks. That's a wrap on another episode of Positively West Virginia. Positively West Virginia is brought to you by the State Journal, wvnews.com, and Interaction Media. As we continue on our journey to help share positive stories of companies and people doing amazing things all across the Mountain State in business, just like my new friend Stephen Mann of Man Cave Distillery, our hope is that we in some way equipped and inspired you with this fascinating business story. If you or someone you know would be a great guest on the show, drop us a line on our website at PositivelyWV.com. And of course, we appreciate your comments and encouragement and even those reviews on Facebook and uh, iTunes. And of course, we encourage you to share these stories on your social media channels as well. And be sure to check out our weekly show. Our podcast is called Positively West Virginia Small Business Mastermind every Friday from 11 a.m. to noon, where we bring a panel of business experts from around the state each week to help small business leaders win. Positively West Virginia is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. You can learn more about our mission of advancing small business and entrepreneurship in West Virginia at PositivelyWV.com. On behalf of our entire Positively West Virginia team and our interaction media team, including our producer today, Mr. Dylan Sheldon. Until next time, I'm your host, Jim Matuga. Stay positive, West Virginia.